pay no attention to the faffing about behind the curtain which you could see in plain daylight. So communication skills, are you in the right place? Is this the talk you expected to see? There's some nodding. I've kind of got theatre lights so I'm blinded and can't actually see any of you. So I'm assuming you're all smiling and nodding and going, yes. Awesome. Okay, so communication skills. Communication is a basic skill most of us practice every single day, right? Often without realising we're doing it. Rarely intentionally. I'm Donna Benjamin. I'm a project lead at Catalyst IT Australia. There's only two of us here from Australia. There's lots of my New Zealand compatriots here. Wave at me if you're in the room, New Zealand compatriots. Oh my god, you're all here. Oh. Um, so I'm also a, a director of the Drupal Association. I'm on the board of the DA. Um, but what makes me qualified to talk to all of you about communication. Well, I've actually got a Bachelor of Arts in Theatre and Drama and um, a Graduate Diploma in Internet and Web Technologies and I'm a qualified trainer. And I had forgotten that all of this is actually about communication until a colleague, and I think it might have been Murray. Are you here, Murray? He's in another room. I think Murray kind of made me realise this when he commented on how effortlessly I seem to find presenting. And I went, hmm, yeah, I've kind of started taking it for granted. But it was that moment that made me think back that I'd actually spent some time studying this with sort of, you know, quite some intention. And what was that thing that I learnt? stagecraft and it is a thing that you can learn. Everything I'm doing right now is part of the art of stagecraft. Now it's debatable as to whether or not I'm actually any good at it but there are some tips and tricks that I just kind of take for granted that almost all of us as generally developer techie kind of presenters could learn from. Really easy stuff that's not not rocket science at all. Well within you know your ability sets. So, stagecraft. What are some of the things that we do? Like, you'll notice I'm not behind the lectern, because if I was, you wouldn't be able to see me anyway. And also, I'm generally standing in the light. I'm harder to see here, right? I can feel it on my face. Here, I'm blinded. I can't actually see you, but you can see me better here, right? Than you can if I'm here, or here. Now this would be actually a much more comfortable place for me to present, because I can see you and I'm not blinded by the projector. But I think it's probably better for you if I'm kind of here. Yeah? No? Me? What the hell am I talking about? Okay, I'll move on. So, I take this for granted because I learnt it and I practice it and I well years ago I practiced it I generally kind of just faff about now but it is something you can learn and it's not hard and it doesn't require any sort of special skills like as you can see but learning stagecraft really means learning a lot about yourself because not only is it where I'm standing on the stage it's also how I'm using my voice which I'll admit I'm doing really badly because I'm not breathing properly. But if I was to actually turn on my theatre voice, I wouldn't need the microphone. Can you hear me up the back? The microphone is needed because we're doing a recording. But opera singers used to not be amplified at all. And it's all about how they use their body to project their voices. And you'll find, you've probably seen some presentations where even though there is a microphone, people are still really kind of hard to hear. So learning to use your body as an amplifier, it's something you can do, it's easy. Just about breathing, control, making sure you're not all hunched over like this. Learn about yourself. But really, the most important thing is to know your audience. 
And how do you do that? Hands up if you've presented before. Most of you. Hands up if you've had to present somewhere and had no idea what kind of people were going to be in the room. Probably about half of you. Hands up if you've presented before and been quite surprised by the people who were in the room and not what you expected. A few of you, right? So how do you find out about your audience? Well, total thumbs up to the um, Drupal South organisers who actually shared some of their um, registration data with us as speakers beforehand. I don't think I've... Yeah, I think that's pretty unusual and I was pretty impressed. So trying to understand your audience and why they're there and <clears throat> what they're hoping to um, get out of your session is a really important part of making sure you communicate with them effectively. But that's about presenting. And I don't really want to talk a lot more about that. Because when we talk about communication skills, we often talk about presenting, about public speaking, or about writing, about the broadcast skills, effectively, if you like, right? What I want to spend a little bit more time thinking about is this skill. Now, we've just followed Fonda's awesome talk on introversion. Listening is actually one of the hardest skills to get right. Um, well, for me, anyway. For introverts, you're all like, oh my god, could you just listen a bit more? Listening, though, listening with intention and being a powerful listener, who's heard of active listening, right? I'm kind of not that much of a fan of that term because it kind of gets parroted back as, oh, you just repeat what the person said. Nah, it's a bit more than that. So I've, I found this, this, uh, this slide actually this morning. Five types of listening. Ignoring. So someone's talking at you, but you're not actually listening at all. Pretend listening. Mm -hmm, Uh-huh, yeah, mm, that was, yeah. Mm. Selective listening, like only hearing what you want to hear. Attentive listening. And at least some of you look like you're doing that right now, so thank you very much. But then there's this one, empathic listening or empathetic listening, listening from their frame of reference, really listening to understand them, or in this case, you. You're my audience. How do I listen to you? Well, I'm going to ask you some questions. <sighs> Communication is a two-way street. Really right. What's the point of broadcasting if there's no one to hear it? And what's the point if those hearing it don't understand it? What's the point of any of it if, you know, they're not really receiving the message? Why is this important? As many as five generations with diverse communication appetites make up today's workforce you are likely to be interacting at some level with people who expect to hear in different ways, use different channels. We heard Preston this morning talk about omni-channel, right? Different types of communication. Even in our daily stuff, we might be using IRC and Slack or email or our ticketing systems, right? There's just this diverse sort of array. And we actually tailor our communication to the channel slightly differently. Well, I do anyway. Are others is that common? Okay, cool. I thought I just made that up. So I want to kind of distill this down. We've, you know, communication's a ridiculously big topic to try and cover in 30 minutes, and I faffed around for 10, so I've only got 20. Three things. I want to distill it down into three very simple things. The what, the how, and the why. Let's start with the what. I don't want to dwell here too much, though. The what is what you're transmitting. It's the message. It's the question. It's the idea. It's the content. We're at a content management conference. The what is the content. Now, I don't know what your content is, so I'm just not going to dwell on it. You know that best. Let's move on. What I want to focus on most is the how. So, how? do we communicate? Oh, in oh so many ways. With words, with pictures, with body language, with facial expressions, 
with not saying anything at all. So, turn to the person sitting beside you or clump into twos or threes and have a little chat. How do you communicate? Just a quick chat. Did warn you. I wanted to hear from you. Okay, we don't have a huge amount of time, so I'm not going to let you chat as long as I would perhaps like to. But can I get a couple of people to call out perhaps just what were some of the things you heard your fellow communicators say? Sorry? GIFs. GIFs. How do we communicate? We communicate with GIFs. I like it. Or GIFs, as some would, <laughs> as some would say. Personally, I go with GIF, but take, you know, take out you want. One here? Body language. Body language, yes. Body language is a huge communication tool, but really absent on IRC, Slack, and in our issue queues on Drupal.org and in our ticketing sessions. Really miss the body language. So when someone says, that was a really great patch. <laughs> Emojis, yes. So we communicate in lots of different ways, in lots of different channels. Who's heard this before? The medium is the message, Marshall McLuhan. And they're really wrapped up together in the how. There's, you know, whether it's hearing or seeing or, or speaking or, you know, whatever, that sort of thing. Or, and then the, the sort of books, you know, presentations, whatever. They're really kind of... Um, you know, they have to be aligned or they, they have to match. So, I don't think I've actually got enough time. So, I wanted to have another chat then to sort of expand upon the how in terms of bringing the, um, the methods that we use to um, communicate with the, the type of communication that it is. So, I'm just going to let you ruminate upon some of this stuff, whereas normally I would like to let you chat and... You know, but unfortunately, we're a little bit short on time. So, does someone, rather than having the chat, does someone want to call out some sorts of other things around this? Sorry? Skype. Skype. Yep. So, that one lets you do voice and text chat and sometimes video. Well, yes, video, when it works. What sort of some of the other ways? And, and perhaps start thinking about where they come together, where there's a really good alignment between, um, you know, the type of communication and the tool that you use or the channel. Documentation. Yep, really good form of communication. One we're lacking a little bit, yep. Sorry? Commit messages. Yes. <laughs> Craft your commit message as carefully actually more carefully than a tweet. Yes, very good. So, what makes someone a great communicator? Do you think of Star Trek? Always. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, what makes someone a great communicator? Now, I will give you a quick minute to chat amongst yourself. What, who comes to mind as a great communicator? Quick chat. Okay, I heard someone call out Steve Jobs. What's some other examples? I said Oprah. You said Oprah. The Tom Cruise thing. The Tom Cruise thing. <laughs> some other great communicators. Call Adam them out. Curtis. Sorry? Adam Curtis. Adam Curtis. I have no idea who that is. Who's Adam Curtis and why is he a great communicator? Ah, he's a documentary filmmaker. That says it all. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Stuart. Yes, Hitler was an amazing communicator. Donald Trump is also an amazing communicator. Can we have some nice ones? <laughs> Obama, Nelson Mandela, thank you, phew. Can we have some women? Oh, is that you, Gibran? Or is that you, Hussein? Oh, it's Babalo. That's cheating. That's flattering me, no. Someone else? Sorry? Jacinda. Yes. I want to defect. Can I defect? Um, no. Um, <laughs> that, all that? Yeah, well. So, um, there is one who, I'm generally not a fan of sort of calling out politicians, but Julia Gillard. Um, on the whole, I found her a very stilted, unnatural communicator. 
But when she gave her misogyny speech in Parliament, boy, did she pack a punch. And then she spoke with passion. She spoke spontaneously. It was really interesting. And I kind of thought about that and, like, if only we had a bit more of that for the rest of the time, we might still have our own government. Anyway, I should shush now. So, yeah, think about that. Next time you're thinking about, you know, someone who's impressed you in some way, have a think about what they actually did and how they did it. Be a little bit intentional about it. Um, bringing it home, we've talked about um, the what, which I didn't really want to go into. We talked about the how, which is really what's most important. And who can remember which communication skill I thought was most important? <laughs> this is body language. No. Try again. What did you say? <laughs> Listening. Thank you, Stuart. So that's the how. And this is the why. If you want to make a difference instead of making a point, make sure you have a call to action. Now, I'm sure you've all heard the phrase call to action before. Does it something that goes on a button? No. It's the reason. It's the why. Why are you communicating? Hopefully, it's for some purpose to learn something in your audience. I mean, hopefully, your audience is, you know, getting this for a reason. Is it to learn something? Is it because they want to change something? Is it because they need to do something? Like, that why is what matters. So, to bring it home, what, the what of this talk is listening. Practicing listening. It's not something you can really, you really think about doing. I've been trying to do it since I've started preparing this talk months and months ago. Actually practice empathic listening. Tune in to the people who are talking to you, especially if you're in the scrum master or business analyst or project management space. Really listen to those client requirements. Really listen to the developers about what they're struggling with. Really listen to your managers and what they're trying to get you to do. Really listen to your reports about the challenges they're facing. Give them time. Focus on them. Be present. Really hear them. But the bit you really need to work on is how to assure your listener that they've been heard. How do you reflect back that that listening was actually meaningful? That's really challenging. It's worth practicing. So how? Do it every day. We get better at things when we practice them. We need to think about communication skills and working on them the same way we think about our other skills, like technology or, or rock climbing or horse riding or ballet dancing. Whatever the skill is, you can practice it. And when you do it intentionally and when you do it for 10,000 hours, you become brilliant at it. But daily practice for listening. Think about how you might do that. And finally, the why. Why? It's really quite simple. You'll have a hell of a lot more impact when you do. So this is my takeaway. Practice empathetic listening every day. Say it with me. I'm going to practice empathetic listening every day. Once more with feeling. I'm going to practice empathetic listening every day. I heard you. <laughs> any questions? If I've got time. Do I have any time? One minute. All right, Stu, go. Why don't we have talks like this before the conference or at the start of the conference? <laughs> Excellent question, Stuart. I think you can talk to the organisers of Drupal South. We'll take that, on, we'll take that as a comment. <laughs> Any others? There's one right at the back. Gibran? So what if while you're listening you lose interest?
That is an excellent question. What if, when listening, you lose interest? That is an opportunity to focus in even harder. And it's when it's hardest to practice empathetic listening, when you think you don't care about what the person is saying, when you think what they're saying isn't meaningful to you, when you think what they're saying is perhaps something you've already heard before. But have you heard it from that person in that way? It's a really good question. And it is one of the real key parts of, you know, building that muscle is listening when you don't want to. Or listening when the person is saying something you don't want to hear. Or listening when someone's giving you constructive or not so constructive criticism. How do we listen when we don't want to hear? How do we listen when we feel like we're being attacked and we just want to run away? Well, if you're actually being attacked and someone is actually throwing stones at you or stabbing you or something, then definitely run away. But if someone is just saying something that's making you feel uncomfortable, see if you can hold that moment and choose to react differently. Mindfulness, presence, again, big fields where you can go and meditate and learn how to do this. But that moment is actually really crucial. Great question, Gibran. Thank you. I Not a Dorothy Dixer, I promise. I have another one. Yes? So communication is a ba basic form. Uh, we deliver our message, right? Uh, but in this golden age of information, we have uh, videos, TV, uh, podcast. We are listening every, like, ev at, out of 24 hours, I think we are listening in 16 hours a day. Yeah. So, Overwhelmed. Yeah. So, so how, why do I listen to other people as well, if I'm listening to that much? So. Choosing to stop listening, to zone out the world, is just as important part of building your skill. Like, I think Fonda's talk preceding this was great, especially introverts. You are, we, we do become bombarded by communication, by messages, by interactions. And sometimes you need to step out of that. But do so knowing that that's okay. Like, you don't have to submit to it all the time. But when you commit to listening, do it with purpose and intention. And when you don't want it, zone it out. Put on your noise-cancelling headphones or go somewhere where you're alone. Moderate it. Before I take your question, I'm going <laughs> to... I'll be very quick. I just wanted to say something about listening, which is when you make that space to be uncomfortable and listen to someone, then the listening, what I've learned, is the listening doesn't necessarily happen all in that moment. It might happen the next day or the next day where you're like chilling out and then you're like, oh, I think I see something now, which I didn't see. And so like being open to those thoughts, like working their way into your brain is another part of listening? Yes, what you said. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, Donna. You're welcome.